My name is Diane Newfer. I've lived up in Julian, Queenmack area for over 40 years. I don't like the fact that we've been denied the right to vote and determine what our pol the policies are for our protection up here. Uh, if, if anybody lived up here or witnessed the previous fires, the Cedar Fire, um, they know what the county policies and state policies are as far as protection up here. Uh, we were considered collateral damage uh, and we lost a third of our community. I'm still trying to rebuild my home. I think our firefighters on both sides, Cal Fire, volunteers, the boots on the ground, they're just glad to have each other's back and they just want to put out fires. It's the policy makers that are making these decisions and they don't, we need to have that say. Because we have a self-interest, we live here, we have a self-interest in protecting our forest lands and our homes and our lives. My name is Jacqueline Egan Berry. I've lived in Julian for five years now. Today it's important to know that our rights, our right to, to vote, to, to be heard, they're, they're being violated right now. On May 15th, the Board of Supervisors met in San Diego and I spoke and Diane Jacobs promised us, the people who live in Julian, that we would have the right to vote. Part of the concern of the community is that there is a, a process that this goes through. Uh, it's through LAFCO and uh, it has to have a public hearing first and that's not even scheduled for septem until September. Um, that uh, th This is the cart before the horse in the classic sense. The, uh, the large government is moving in and occupying uh, a place where they're not even been uh, confirm that, that it's their place to be. So that's why the citizens are upset. The County Fire Authority is uh, already acting as if this is a done deal. My name is Karen Kiefer. Um, I'm a resident of Julian since 2009 um, and I've also worked, been employed with Julian Kumaka Fire Protection District since 2003 as a paramedic firefighter. Uh, been the EMS director off and on for about four years. The concern I have is that low population is low priority. Uh, Ranchita is covered about 50% of the time uh, based on the information we've gotten over the past month and a half or so. Um, so that means they have no coverage for structure protection, EMS, and traffic collisions at all. The, the response into that area, if Warner Springs is out, is going to be a long time. And Shelter Valley, the county engine that's over there, um, gets moved to Julian to cover and leaving Shelter Valley uncovered. Um, the, they get assigned to wildland fires, uh, which is the responsibility of the state, and leaving their primary uh, responsibility of traffic collisions, structure protection, and EMS, um, all those people at risk. Chief Meacham, uh, County Fire Authority, Cal Fire, uh, stated to our public uh, community, 100 of our citizens and our board, that this service will be free, and we know for a fact it will not be free. Based on Riverside, this year, um, they're starting to implement a cost recovery plan of charge $390 an hour for EMS and traffic collisions. That's on top of fees, that's on top of cutting resources. The community has, has voiced their opinion over three petitions and a total of 800 signatures saying they want to support JCFPD, they want to vote, and the board of directors just has turned their backs completely on this community and not let them have a, have a say. LAFCO does have a provision in there that the people can protest if we get 25% of uh, registered voters or landowners, whichever whichever it is, we'll find out. It forces it to a vote. If we get 50% plus one, or uh, 51%, then um, it will close the whole dissolution process down completely. And we think, you know, we think absolutely that they're afraid of that.